Hey everybody, wanting to take this video to tell you about a game I just played called The Town of Light. Now, it's a really interesting game. It's done as a psychological adventure game, um, like a psychological thriller, like the movie sense, I guess. Um, but it's really quite interesting because it's based off a true story, something that actually happened. So there's a girl called Renee. At the age of 16, um, in 1938, she was admitted to a lunatic asylum in Italy. Now, the story, or in the game, you play her as an adult. She's come back to the lunatic asylum. It's now run down. And you're there to look through the ruins to try and find answers about what actually happened there. Now, it's fascinating because it is a true story and, it, and a lot of it is derived from, you know, papers or medical files that was unraveled or like her personal diary and things like that. How much of, you know, what they use, I'm unsure, but the, the, one of the main concepts in the game is Renee's diary. So you're given, um, when you play the game, you're given the diary and you can read through it and find out, you know, what she was thinking or going on. I think that is an actual diary that you're given and may be reconstructed to be like high def or whatnot or, or to, you know, for more digital mediums. Um, but the content of the diary, I believe, is the same diary or the same content that, that she actually wrote, the, the real Renee in the, in the real world. And the, the stuff is the same. So that immediately interested me. Um, watching the trailer, it, it seems like quite the, the intense horror game as well. Not so much, a little bit like I thought it was going to be like Silent Hill a little bit. Um, but by the end of the second chapter or so, you realize, um, at least I realized, was there's nothing in the environment that can actually harm you. So it makes it more like a walking simulator. Um, where you walk around, you interact, and you get new knowledge, and the story unfolds. And rather than a game which you know requires urgency to run away from something that could harm you, and then like end the game or whatever. Now that to me was a little bit disappointing at the time, um, but when chapter three comes, I think your your the character Renee now discovers a, a medical her her medical papers right like that the institution wrote about her and then you're presented with some things that are conflicting to to what renee remembers previously in the in the previous chapters so there's like a notion of of abuse that she suffered and the by the institution and the the medical records say that no abuse happened and she hallucinated it now until that point um there was, you know, certain things that were disturbing in the game, um, but there wasn't anything out of the ordinary. It's just, you know, may you know, Renee is confused, um, and she has some personality quirks, right? It, there's nothing in there that that would really count as um, psych, uh, schizophrenia or or something like that. Um, that is revealed at that point. Like there's flashbacks, but many people have that. You don't have to be mad. Um, there, there's disorientation. Many people have that you don't have to be mad and there's like some confused things about rules and whatnot, but many people have that and you don't have to be mad. So it seems more like a disturbed or, or you know, person, not some disturbed in terms of, um, you know, there's something disturbing her and you're trying to unravel what it is. Now, when you pr get presented this conflicting evidence, because the, the medical file says, look, that abuse that she remembers didn't happen, it was a hallucination. Um, Renee immediately becomes distressed as you're playing, and you're now presented with three options to, to calm her or, or to, to provide some inner dialogue to her to influence the way she thinks about this. And the three options really start becoming the, the premise of the game so originally what attracted me to the game was hey i get to emphasize with with the mad and you know it's a true story so you know it's something that will really help me emphasize with something that actually happened and understand something that actually happened now now when you, when she's freaking out and, and um you get to present those things the the premise immediately becomes clear so 
essentially the the game is about um, establishing which reality or version of the truth is is actually true and so you presented these these conflicting realities and you know renee's memories of abuse versus the medical documents that say the abuse didn't happen now to comfort her to provide the next thought um in in her brain is the first option is something like look renee obviously you're mad you hallucinated it they're right um and the second option is look we don't know um let's just try and keep figuring out what we know um you know try and find clues and develop the story and, and figure it out and the third one is look renee you're completely right they they abuse you and, and so you know it's your reality um their reality is right your reality is right or neither reality is right right so it's really about trying to figure out um, you know, in the game, based on your interactions and things like that, how, as the player, um, whose reality do you believe and trust? Now, yeah, the first two or three chapters are the same for everybody, and the last chapter um, is different. Uh, no, so the last chapter is the same. First two or three chapters are the same, last chapter is the same, but the chapters in between change. So... You know, the story is still the same, right? Because exactly because of that, right? The first two chapters, like the real life story, is the same happened for everybody. But the interesting premise of it um, becomes revealed at, at that, that split um, of that preference, which is more that, you know, the story happened, right? Like it happened in the past, that can't be changed. But what can be changed um, or can be you know provides the intrigue is well which story is true right so like you know the story happened or you know the 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 situation unfolded and occurred but but whose reality do you actually trust do you trust the reality of the mad or do you trust the reality of the the institution um and or do you trust neither do you just trust the data and not pass judgments um, but then when you have conflicting data, who, who do you believe, right? So as, as you know, the middle chapters of the game really unfold, like you presented some really conflicting things. Like at times just like, well, who am I believing right now? Do I believe um, the, the character? Do I believe, you know, the institution? Do I believe neither? And the way I played it and, and your choices like you really empathize with the character as you're playing her so earlier like i did say like it seems a little bit like a walking simile and like that urgency is gone but in like certain cut scenes like there's harm about to happen to her and despite it being a cut scene right like or you know despite in the game like you know that okay the scary noises aren't actually going to hurt you nothing's going to jump out and potentially kill you or whatever um, but you know, in the cutscenes, like this harm about to occur to her, and you are really like, you know, I had the controller, and I'm just like, oh my gosh, like trying to do whatever I can to prevent this harm from occurring to her, and you know, that could that type of reaction can only be possible if I if I had empathy for her or developed empathy. So I definitely the game succeeded without a doubt in, in making me incur have empathy for for this girl Renee and that's really intense because as the game like you know unfolds like you really have to think okay this is a story it happened um and this is what the girl really believed to be true and this is what the institution really believed to be true and there's no way of going back in time and trying to figure out which one was the case. And no matter what happened, like at the end, you know, a, a tragedy, I guess, unfolds. And you can't change that. And that happened. And the only thing you can try and do is try and understand. And what was... I'm tearing up because it, it really is such an impactful story. Because you have to realize as well as like 
the like the reality that the, the game really shows or illustrated quite well is that um, the patients um, really had no rights. The, the, the rights were overthrown by the doctors and the doctors could do whatever they, they considered best. Now, they did what they considered best. Uh, um, or, you, you know, that's a question as well in the game. And, but because of that power and because of that ability to abuse that power, because the power exists and these people are vulnerable, um, the story of Renee isn't an isolated case. And, you know, you, you play through the story and, and at the end, you're really left wondering, like you go straight to Wikipedia and, and you try and read up more about the, the case and about what happened to her and, and about, you know, what happened to, to many people like her. And you realize like, look, these are, um, you know, tens of thousands, um, if not more, like 40,000 people approximately in the United States alone um had the the operations or, or things occur to them that are horrific against the patient's will to to desire that and and that's it's horrifying and like that's where the horror part of the game comes in, which is like it, it exposes like a horror in something that was routine and, and happens um, especially a lot more then. Um, and you, you're left asking as well, like, you know, who, who do you trust? Um, do you trust the mad? Can you believe the stories? Or their reality, or, or do you trust the the, the institution um, who has power over that individual? And that's a really hard question to answer. Um, and you know, back then, like you know, now you could probably set up like um, things for independent verification, like webcam feeds or whatever, in all the rooms, and try and document things and make sure they can't be tampered with, and independent inspections and things like that, right? Um, but you know, back then they didn't have those things, so like abuse could happen, and and no one um, may have known about that. So you know, these things that happen to her as the game unfolds, like you see her mental stability at times get incredibly poor and you you at the same time like as you're playing it depending on on the questions or the interactions you do you also have to you know as a player be be aware of how your choice is going to impact um this character's or this person's um mental stability so, you know, initially I'm like, wow, she's really terrified that maybe her reality isn't true, you know, which, which, you know, I'm definitely not going to, to do the option that says, no, you're mad, um, because I didn't know how that would impact her. And certain things in the game is like, depending on the, the options you play, you, you really question whether or not you, you consoled the character um, in the best way possible. Um, because, yeah, and, you know, at the end, you know, with, with the final chapter kind of thing, like, you're still left just like, oh my, oh my gosh, like, you know, how could I have done, you know, better by this person, right? And, you know, you start reading, like, the literature and, and, and discovering it, um, yeah, and... I don't know it's it's really it's a really great game like if you're like the type of person who likes empathizing with edge cases like you know with with things that challenge um people to do questionable things um like I really enjoy that like I love um you know that's why I like Breaking Bad which is that 
you know, this is a person who set out with good intentions and Breaking Bad and, um, you know, just depending on certain choices they made, it had, you know, really interesting consequences. But like with Breaking Bad, it's like I can empathize and sympathize um, with it because I can relate to to the choices he's had to, to make or I can see myself in similar positions um, with those type of choices and with the pain that that character feels. So like with this, it's like, um, you know, while, you know, I, I have my sanity, which is really nice, um, the, the game really makes me wonder about, you know, how to, to interact or, or trust those who are mad and um, I don't have the, the blessings of, of complete sanity and how can we protect them as well from abuse because they are vulnerable people and um yeah it's just if that sounds interesting it's worth the 25 dollars or whatever it is um that one can pay for it um it would be really nice if you could run in the game um or even if the head actually bobbed when you walked um so it felt like you were actually moving the character and the character is like gliding through the the thing but um it it, it was incredibly in, enjoyable it takes like five hours to to complete um but and then you have the replay value of, of doing different decisions and interactions um with the game yeah but it's it's going to be a game that probably um haunts me um for a while not really a game but just the story of, of this girl and, and the story of, of just those people in those asylums um yeah all right um that's that's that video um hope my ramblings were of interest and um yeah let me know in the comments um if you've played that game what you thought about it um mention if if you're gonna spoil it um i've tried in this video not to spoil anything so if you're going to talk about the game mention it in the the spoilers or whatnot um but then again there's the discussion forum on steam about it which is quite nice so people can dis discuss the game um and yeah let, let me know um if if the if the game sounds like it's interesting all right um thanks thanks everybody cheers